Welcome to the Midlife Pilot Podcast. We are glad you're with us. What is it like to become a pilot in your 40s and 50s? The challenges are unique for those of us in midlife, but so are the rewards. Hosts Ben, Brian, and Ted talk learning to fly, growing as pilots, and the joy of flying to destinations. The purpose of the podcast is not to teach, but to share knowledge and experiences of being a midlife pilot. Join the Midlife Pilot community and listen in every week. We are not CFIs or particularly intelligent, so if you want to learn how to fly, talk to to anyone else other than the hosts of a podcast. Even this intro was too challenging for us and we used a robot to do it. Okay, checklists are complete. Let's get the show started. Hello and welcome to the Midlife Pilot Podcast, episode 96, where we share the experiences and challenges of flying in midlife. Whether you're a seasoned pilot, training for your private or instrument or commercial or tailwheel or whatever it may be, we're just thinking about getting started in aviation. We like to think of this podcast as your aviation companion and your weekly dose of aviation inspiration. My name is Ben and I am a commercial certificated pilot with an IFR rating based in the Metro Atlanta area. I fly a Cessna 182, we like to call the beast who got a lot of work last week. Joining me tonight is a friend of ours, the co-host uh, with the most just trying to come off something off the top of the head. It just didn't really work. Brian, who is a pilot in Nashville, the Bachelorette Super Charlie. He flies a Cherokee 180. We like to call Lucy. Hello, sir. Hello. I'm super excited to be here and uh, and, and grateful to be here with, with you fine friends tonight. That's glad to have you with us. Also joining us from the best coast, left coast, west coast, whatever you want to call it. He's based in Portlandia. He's a sport pilot flying a flight design, CTLS, we like to call the Ed. Good evening, Ted. How you doing? Hey, it's Ted and the egg, not Ed and the tag. Yeah. <laughs> Did I say that? I don't think I said that right. You, you said flying the Ed. Yeah. Egg. Well, it's all good. It's yeah. that southern draw that I, I don't hit the hard Gs that hard. So There you go. Yeah. They're doing it's, well. It's you know, always it's information thing. whiskey around here. It's, it's always, yes. yeah. Problem yeah. is maybe lack of alcohol. I could talk about it with a little bit more. Uh, not enough or too much. Yeah. Not enough. It's always one or the other. Yeah. Ted, I saw an egg for sale uh, recently. Did you see it? Uh, it was, it was, it looked like exactly your egg on trade a plane. Oh, uh, I didn't see it, but they do come up. Yeah. Yeah. How many were made? I think that there's two to 400 in the States. So, you know, there's, okay. there's more international, but about that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. We actually, um, RH and I, who flew together last week, uh, he said, yeah, Ted can make this flight from Greensboro to Portland and with one tank of gas. <laughs> That's right. So, uh, anyway, uh, let's uh, hit the events and announcements that we have coming up. Uh, we're going to be broadcasting our 100th episode on Monday, October 28th. Uh, we'll be broadcasting live from 4 Golf 7. That's Fairmont Airport in Fairmont, West Virginia. And for those of you who don't know, that's the base camp for the midlife pilot, Chris Moran. So uh, we'll be broadcasting from one of those hangars. Uh, sounds like he's gearing up for us. Brian, I think I saw a message in the Discord. Yeah, uh, he's he's at least feigning that he's excited about us sort of volunteering to descend all upon him uh, and take his free time uh, that he, you know, he had to, he, he wanted to leave doing the podcast so that he would have more time for other things. And so now what are we doing? We're just going to bring all of us and everything to him and say, we need to do this now here. It's the mafia. We keep pulling them back in. Exactly. So. Um, we've created a channel um, for the 100th in Discord. If you're planning on attending RSVP there, as we said, you know, we are not CFIs. Also, this is not an official event. It's feel free to come and hang out. We're not going to plan it fully, but uh, there's a channel in Discord where you can uh, sign up for your interest. And that's where we'll communicate details about where things will be. Yeah. And I'm hearing, I'm hearing, uh, rumbles of a lot of really cool, interesting people that are planning on, on being there. So, uh, I, I think I even saw somebody in the, I think it was our, our friend Badger pilot that was even asking about camping. Right. So 
Yeah. Uh, who knows uh, what is going to be happening? <laughs> it's going to be a, a full scale takeover of beautiful little Fairmont Airport. I'm super excited to to finally land there and just to, you know, s- s- get get the VIP pepperoni roll, whatever uh, experience. Yes. I'm excited about the flying because the the leaves should be really pretty that time of the year. I'm at least I'm hoping that it will be. And I just haven't spent any time up in that area, mm-hmm. so I'm, I'm just stoked about just being around there. I don't even have to say a word the entire time. I just want to soak it all in. All now, right. Yes. You two may not remember, but I've landed there. That's right. I do remember that. Yeah. How was it coming in there? Was it? Uh, oh wow! This looks a lot bigger than YouTube or smaller. <laughs> <laughs> It's about what I expected, you know, kind of a medium, small airport. Mm. And, uh, you know, there's a, uh, there's terrain around it, but it's not, I guess for me, it's like, it was, it was a reasonable amount of terrain. So mm-hmm. yeah, didn't get to see uh, Chris, but I was kind of creeping on him anyway. So yeah, that's good. That's well, cool. We're about to creep on him fully. Uh, yeah. I think it's, I think we're actually going to film. I don't know that there's going to be all kinds of stuff going. I don't know, man. It's going to be. It's going to be a thing, but uh, Ben, don't worry. We'll we'll get somebody to do uh, makeup. No, we don't need a hair person, but I'm just saying we'll get somebody to do a uh, world makeup. I mean, does that is that really a concern for me? <laughs> makeup maybe, but hair shouldn't be a problem. Yeah, uh, I can say that. Not uh, Brian, why don't we uh, hit up our housekeeping notes? Yeah, and uh, we'll just blast through this. But uh, we always like to uh, thank our listeners for making this the best pilot community that we know of. It's a positive encouraging, supportive place where we talk about everything from training, bad radio calls, sharing personal minimums to keep each other accountable, the challenges of plane ownership, offering feedback on flight plans, arranging community meetups. Basically, it's a goldmine of experience and camaraderie and not just about flying, but growing as midlife pilots and maybe people. Ways to engage with the community. So one, Support the podcast on Patreon for as little as $1 a month. Put on my Sally Struthers uh, video reel. Uh, For as little as $1 a month, that's 25 cents per episode. You can support the podcast and join the Midlife Pilot Podcast community on Discord. You'll get access to miles of bonus content, including check ride debriefs with community members, stories of challenging flight experiences, and much more. 10% of the proceeds of our Patreon are donated to the Freedom Aviation Network, who works with volunteer pilots to provide safe, efficient, and rapid air transportation for survivors of human trafficking and their advocates. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Uh, If you're here, great. If you're not, show up. We're here. Send us feedback. We love hearing from listeners with interesting insights and stories, and you can write us or send a voice memo midlifepilotpodcast at gmail.com. We respond to every message eventually, and you might even hear yourself on a future episode. To join the community, give feedback, get merch, or anything else, visit midlifepilotpodcast.com. Dad, yeah, how about, uh, we got a few new supporters, didn't we? Yeah, yeah. Uh, and by the way, on the merch angle, uh, we should have some, uh, some updated merch coming very soon. So I think we'll be able to talk about that next week, which will be good. Uh, Yes, we have some new Patreon supporters. Uh, This week we have at the Landomatic level, we have Skycat and Carter G. At the Hershey Bar level, we have P. Kinney. And at the Beast level, we have Andrew H. And we were talking about Kinney's shoes before we came on the air. And I'm not sure if Kinney's shoes is only an East Coast thing or if there was any on the West Coast. So this is... uh, Old people talking about old companies. Did you have? Did you have a uh, and out out uh, in your part of the the world? Did you have a uh, Orange Julius? Yeah, yeah. Okay, that made it everywhere. Yes. Okay, so that's good. All in malls, though. I only saw them in malls. You know, we don't have uh, Waffle Houses, um, but oh no, that's a Southeast thing. But I kind of I kind of have a thing for Waffle House, and so I do so know good. that there's one in in Tucson, uh, Arizona, and I've been to it. So. Because I know how far it reaches. So, based in Atlanta. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Also, um, I want to talk about our uh, the things that, that I've noticed in our community this week. I try to keep some notes about all the things that are discussed, and I miss a lot of them, but um, cool things to talk about. Um, 
First, I'm finally working on a um, case or a window mount for the Delta Zulu. And so I have mentioned that to our um, CAPS uh, level supporters. So I'll probably send a couple out uh, to that level first. Uh, we talked about Flysto and the improvements that it has. Um, it's, it's, Flysto is really cool for sure. visualizing your flights and yeah. judging your flights and showing traffic on your flights. Um, also talked about replacing us with AI, creating podcast segments using AI, and I am all for that. We're not experts, so whatever it takes. Uh, talked about crossing into Canada or crossing through Canada. If we've got any supporters listening that have experience with not flying into Canada, but you know, flying across a corner of it, write in. Love to know uh, your experience with that. A uh, couple of things from Chris C. Um, he debriefed his night flying, uh, his first, which was his first night flights in six months. Talked about coming in low at night and paper checklists. Also talked about what he called baby step first times with his longest flights, um, flying around parachutes, uh, not Cirruses, uh, requesting a different runway than Tower gave and his first progressive taxi. Thought those were all great. Like, oh yeah, I remember doing that, you know, having that experience. Um, talked about uh, quote unquote, women can fly, which is a, an organization I just wrote down. Uh, it's Eagle Flights for um, introducing females to flying, which is awesome. Uh, Scott P passes check ride. Uh, we don't have a clapping noise, insert your own. Uh, and uh, Wendell Geek and Alyssa talked about recent benefit flying experiences. And uh, we may talk about a little, that a little bit later. By the yeah. way, I want to say real quick, uh, Chris C, I, I just love that. I think Chris's experience is, I love that he shares so much in the community at these key points because it wasn't long ago that he was talking about how, you know, I think a lot of us, you hustle so much to get your certificate and then you kind of get out there and you do the first wave of things, you know, first time flying with my partner or whatever it is. And then you kind of get through that part of it and then you just realize the the weight of what you still just don't know and the, the experience yet that you, or that, that you don't yet have. And, and then how that can be sort of daunting and maybe a little paralyzing in a way. And, and, um, and then, you know, you've probably just gotten finished devoting so much time to getting a check ride done and everything else that you kind of have probably, you know, most people have other things that they now need to maybe spin back up that they've been spinning down for a minute as midlife pilots, you know, have. And um, I just think it's really interesting that uh, I, I enjoy watching uh, and ha hearing about the, the those sort of micro progressions through the post check ride experience in the first year or two of getting out there. And so for him to have now um, longest flight, um, you know, being in the midst of, uh, what do you call it? Meat missiles. Uh, yes. Yeah. You know, um, but more importantly, one of the, I think coolest things about what Chris has talked about here is that you grow into part of how your confidence that grows, how it manifests, I think, is when you start to have, you start to really, you're not surviving as PIC, you're asserting yourself more as PIC. So to request a runway, uh, we're conditioned to say, oh, ATC told me to land this runway. I'm landing this runway. Yeah. It is not to be overlooked or um, looked past that he said, no, I'd rather land on this runway. And they just gave it to him. No problem. You know, and then he gets to have that experience of, wait, I asserted myself contrary to what ATC said. And they actually didn't care at all. It wasn't any kind of problem. And I got what I wanted. And then further to ask for a progressive taxi. I think that progressive taxi has a little bit of a stigma around it. I would say yeah. there's a little bit of a macho ism that is yeah. a little bit of an undercurrent for these things, right? Like a go around the hesitation to go around is kind of the same thing. It's, it's a tool it's there, use it. And so he was talking about being in an unfamiliar airport and opting for, and requesting for, uh, requesting a, a progressive taxi. Um, uh, there is no shame in that. And honestly, 
I don't care how busy it is. I don't care what airport you're at. I don't care what is happening. I don't care if ATC just goes, oh, oh yeah, fine. Nice, right? You know, who cares? You yep. get what you need. And he was saying that I was around a lot of planes that I'm not familiar with. Or, or, you know, a type of ground traffic that was overwhelming to me or maybe new to me. And, and so that's what I opted for in an unfamiliar environment and he got it. And so those things are huge. So to add to that, um, even if a control, I don't think if you pull a hundred, uh, air traffic controls working ground, 99 of the hundred are going to say, ask for progressive. If you don't know, because if you don't, and you're not familiar you're going to create a lot more problems for me than yes. if you just try to assume you know what you're doing mm-hmm. and you screw up. Yes. Uh, and it, 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 there, that stigma needs to go away. Um, it, I don't care where you are in your journey of aviation. If you're a five hour pilot or a 5,000 hour pilot, there are a lot of airports with hot spots and issues and asking for pro- uh, progressive is, should, should be it's part just, of your deal. It's not declaring yeah. a taxi emergency. That's exactly right. <laughs> it's it, speaking of which, um, I went had to go uh, to GSO yesterday, and they have one runway closed and uh, one main taxiway closed. And I had I almost asked for it, but the controller, in his wisdom, said this is going to be a very long taxi ride. Be ready to write this down. Oh. Yeah. And I said, all right, shoot. And I actually got it right the first time, but it was, we, we taxied for, for about 20, 25 minutes. It was, we got the full tour of Greensboro Triad Airport. I mean, the full tour. We saw every building that is on that premise. So. Some of them twice. Yeah. Yes, exactly. (laughs) But uh, anyway, um, good for, I I agree with you. The other thing I was going to say is you, you, I don't know that I would characterize them as micro achievements. I got turned on to you and Chris. I had, I was further in my training and had, you know, I just started earlier than y'all's, but it's still to this day, it feels like when somebody does a night landing or they do a long cross country or something that they haven't gone into an unfamiliar airport and dodged pair, you know, made the right call with uh, people jumping out of airplanes and staying out of the air. It's those experience levels that you're going to remember for a long time. And I feel like I, it makes me happy to see somebody else achieve those things that I did as well. I can empathize in a good way with what they did. And, you know, it's, to me, it's very little different than doing your first solo cross country. You're building your experience. You're, you're really adding stuff to your experience bag. So, Yeah. I, I really appreciate um, when people write and kind of give their debriefs of, of first experiences or unusual or whatever it happens to be. And these are great examples of that, right? The, the first, that, that first time, whether it's progressive, it, progressive made me think of that same experience of being there and you're coming off the runway and they give you 17 directions and you're still on the runway and you got your hands full and you're at a busier delta than you've ever been at. I'm thinking uh, uh, KSQL, kind of a famous one in the Bay Area. And, yeah. and where you say, no, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll get that when I went to off the runway. And those experiences, right? They, those ground controls would much rather you bother them, let's say, than uh, cross an active runway or uh, go too far and need to turn around. Like every experience that could happen is worse than, than progressive uh, or whatever those, those kind of uh, experiences that you feel like a, like a baby pilot, I guess. I like right. this comment from Colin too. He's asking, uh, anyone ever asked for the crosswind, crosswind runway for practice, assuming the Delta, for instance, is on the slower side? Of course. And it's, it, it all goes back to that, um, ask, you can always ask, Yep. <laughs> you know, they'll tell you. So, um, and that's a great, uh, reason to ask for a different one at runways if you're actually looking to get that practice. So, yeah, that's great. 
my cool. uh, CFI did that when I was in training and got some real kind of epic uh, crosswinds. And I was early in in training at that point. And, you know, we get down about 20 feet above the runway and get to get knocked way off to the side. It, not surprising. And I was like, your controls. So I yeah, just yeah. like instantly <laughs> give up, you know? And so I always remember that. But uh, I tend to go to... Um, untowered fields for that crosswind practice, but it is really nice. I much prefer it when you're kind of under the watchful eye if they're not right. too busy. Right. Well, and, and we'll, the topic tonight, we'll get into a little bit of this as well, pet peeves. Uh, but before we do, um, wanted to uh, check in with you guys about your flying. I'll tell you a little bit about mine, but the first thing that I want to put out there is, is to let all of our listeners know, uh, no matter where you are, that Ted and, and Brian and I are, are still keeping everybody affected by Hurricane Helene in our thoughts and our prayers. Um, we've had several community members fly some benefit missions, uh, including myself, but that's neither here nor there. It's, it's um, the only reason I mention it is having um, firsthand uh, witnessing a lot of the, um, the, the positivity after something so terrible happening, uh, is, it's, it's, um, it does a lot for the soul. It's, it's good food, food for the soul to see everybody chip in the way that they're doing, uh, and just let everybody know that our heart is still, um, you know, we're, we're, we're feeling for you and, you know, we hope we can get through this sooner than later. So, um, just know that, um, uh, you know, we'll, we may or may not get into a little bit more of the benefit flying down the road, but there's just so much going on right now that it's just, it's too big of a pill to swallow. And, um, you know, we're, I, we don't want our audience to think that we're not thinking of these, uh, these people that are in harm's way. And, you know, folks in Tampa now are, are staring down the, the eye of another storm. So this is, um, it's just a tough time right now. So, and there are a couple other podcasts that have, they've talked about the, the aviation side of Helene. I'll put links to those in the, in the show notes. Um, one of those is aviation news talk on episode three, five, one. And the other is opposing bases on three, five, two. Um, they, they went in depth on various topics related to it. So Wait a minute, opposing bases. I'm, who? I'm not, who's yeah. that? Yes. Uh, yeah, you flew with, uh, with RH of yeah, OB this yeah. week. Yeah. Um, yeah. But yeah, it's, I, I just wanted to, I didn't want everybody to think that we're completely ignoring it. We're not obtuse. We want you to know that um, it is definitely on our minds, but. Um, yeah, it's so dynamic and it's, it's, um, I know that even RH has said we are a little too self-deprecating sometimes about not wanting to be instructive or considered the authority on anything, but uh, we still maintain that. And so. Yeah. Uh, uh, it's, um, it's definitely one of those things where I've got, you know, multiple family members displaced that don't know when they're going to get back. Uh, there's, there's, there is a lot going on. And I think that in these times, it's important to think about how this is going to be such a long, long sustained challenge and problem. And so we will think more about how we can directly support that from a, a longer and more sustained point of view, I suppose. But, right. uh, but yeah, it's, it's wild. I mean, it's just, and just, I don't know. I just, I grew up a lot in those mountains, you know, and it's, it's hard to see. I, I Hey, I even got kicked out of college in those mountains. I, I got kicked out of my, my freshman year. I got kicked out of the college my freshman year. App and, State? Uh, uh, no, Lee's McRae. Oh, okay. Which okay. is uh, right there at the base of Beach Mountain. And, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so That's, I'm not sure that I'm still banned from the campus, but I believe that I was for a period of time. I, Allegedly um, for what reason? Yeah. So it was a lot. It was, there was a lot going on then. I yeah. think maybe we need to take a deeper dive on that on the 100th episode. I definitely oh, yeah. want to hear a little bit more about this. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, just, it's just, it's so hard to, to see, but, um, you know, and I think that, uh, I'm, I'm just really glad that we have people like opposing bases and others to, uh, more richly and, and specifically articulate what efforts are happening and what are the best practices and, 
uh, all of those things. So, um, that's, that's where I'm coming from. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. But tonight it's, um, it's about pet peeves. Um, yes. And, you know, I, I've been thinking about it for a bit and, uh, it's ironic that we do have, uh, opposing bases in the chat because a few of mine are ATC related. Of course, I'm sure that if you talk to anybody at Atlanta Tracon, they've probably got a very long list of pet peeves that I do that they can't stand. So I'm sure it goes both ways. Do you, um, do you remember back in the day, I, this doesn't really exist anymore, but you'd always have like the board of shame at, at the, you know, at the restaurant or yes. the 7-Eleven, the you know, it was like the, the, the people bounce, bounce checks. checks. Yeah. 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 So they, they must have like tail numbers and like a list of sins. I've asked, I, yeah. I have asked, um, yeah. folks I've toured, uh, Atlanta Tracon. Mm -hmm. And the first question I ask is where's the board of shame? Yes. And they're like, we don't know what you're talking about. I said, you've got a list of pilots that you're, you're, you're going to deny services. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Fly when I, when I lived in, uh, when I lived in New York city in my neighborhood, there was this taco shop that was it was like, it was weird because it was a Chinese taco shop. Everybody that worked there was Chinese and they made these tacos and that's, they made this kind of proxy Mexican food that was not anything like Mexican food, but it was really good. But anyway, uh, behind the counter they had, uh, and none of them really spoke any English, but it was hilarious because they had a, a behind them on the wall writ large was the SOB list. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a feeling a, a, a Atlanta trade con probably has an SOB list, but um, I, I'd like to hear from you guys first. One of y'all go first. Tell me your, your pet peeves in the cockpit, on the ground, right, aviation we'll just, related. I don't care what it is. I, all I, right. So I've, I've, I've got rolling. one because, you know, while opposing basis is in the chat, we got to get some of the ATC related ones out of the way. Right. We, and, um, yeah. and so let's get to this. I would like to start with the first one, if that's okay, please. And all right, it's, it's pet peeves, I think also are things that it's somewhere between OCD and just being a jerk in your own head about things, as opposed to just being benevolent and forgiving people for these very small, um, you know, transgressions to your soul. But the one that I have that I'm going to lead with here, it makes me crazy. And I don't know, it just, it makes me quiver every time I hear it on frequency and it happens all the time and it will always happen all the time is four. <laughs> four, November one, two, three, four, five. Two eight zero four, November one, two, three, four, five. If you, if, what if you had a tail number that had three fours in it or something? Anyway, it's just, it, it sounds like a number. It should not be. So much energy has been put into structuring the phonetic alphabet and all these things to take away the potentials for miscommunication. And so then what do we do? We just put things right back in there that don't even need to, you could just not do it. It's not like you need to do it better. You just need to not just do less. So, uh, four, that makes me crazy. Now, do you, do you guys ever do that? The four thing? Well, uh, as a counter, what I wrote as my first, uh, pet peeve is I'm annoyed by people annoyed about phraseology <laughs> because to me, it doesn't matter. That's, or that's not the top priority. And especially as a new student pilot, as somebody struggling on the radio, sure. for me, it was, man, I'm so focused on not saying for or using an yeah, extra word yeah, yeah. that it's I, like, yeah. get it out. Don't worry. And plus an extra phrase or two is not, is not tying up the radio. What's tying up the radio is all the other mistakes that I make on, on frequency. So, so for me, the, the perfection on, on the phraseology, I guess I, I want to give, um, newer pilots, meaning all of us, a little bit of a pass on that. Sure, sure, of course. So it still drives me crazy. Oh, it can't be for sure. Yeah. Any, anything that just doesn't have to be done. Yeah. I don't know. Well, let's, uh, let's bring in Adam V's comment here. Uh, the, uh, all traffic in the area, please advise. Um, 
Yeah, I usually uh, kind of celebrate, you know, try to like flag my hand to the GoPro so that I, you know, make sure that I recognize that when it happens. It's it to me, it's one of those things where it's like, oh, somebody did it. This is awesome. You know, <laughs> so, no, I wish that I wish that there was. Um, I, so what I would love to say when I hear that is to then immediately offer a strangely hyper specific point of wisdom about something random that they're not asking about. Like, cause they're not saying advise what? So yeah. it's like, Hey, uh, monocultures are bad for, uh, your yard or whatever. I don't know. Yeah. I, yeah. I want to say there, there's a wreck on I-85 uh, and there's a lot of traffic there. I mean, I seriously, that's w- yeah. wherever, whatever's around there, uh, is what I want to do. Um, that was my number two, the number one, and this is tiny and it, I don't know what it is, but when, when a pilot checks on and says, this is yeah, November one, two, three, well, no, of course this is who that is. It's, I don't know. That just, that's like nails on a chalkboard for me. <laughs> this if they say, hello, my name is, that would be great. It, yeah. It, exactly. Yeah. I mean, you might as well just say that. Um, it, the other side of it, the other side of the mic, and I think uh, with RH being in the chat, he'll appreciate this. Uh, I have flown uh, right seat with several other pilots, and I'm not going to call out any names, but as soon as we get a frequency change, as as soon as they switch over, they're calling up, and that is not good. That That's bad enough as it is. But if they don't get a response within six, seven seconds, they're oh. calling again. Oh. Yeah. That's when it makes my blood boil. Yeah. Give them the pause. And then, but, uh, it's, it is, uh, it is, I'm, I'm telling all new pilots out there, just be patient. They heard you and they are going to call you back nine times out of 10. So that well, that's, that's what really, it's not ATC. It's the pilot side. Uh, just, it just, ugh, just drives me crazy. At the speeds we're going, we're going to be in that sector for a long time. It's, there's, there's not a big rush where you're not doing 400 knots, you know, at, uh, at 2,500 feet, you're going to be there a while. Yeah. So, and, yeah. and please go back and enjoy our episode reading the room, I think is what we call yes, it. That's correct. R- yes. RH recover this. It is a strange subtext, subtextual sort of art form to judge the absences of communication and to listen to other communications and how that should inform what yeah. you're communicating and when. And that's a great episode for kind of next level uh, ATC communications. And it is really just about reading the room. Now, another one that I have that uh, is, you know, sorry, Ted, these are just going to be these things, you know, yep. um, with you makes me nuts. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Um, I want to hear somebody say once against you, <laughs> no, but it, it, that's a, just another, that's the same thing as this is, or I don't know. To me that it's, it's not about perfection, but if, if there's, I don't know, I mean, be conversational, be relaxed. Don't, especially when you're new, don't worry about these things so much, but I don't know. Aim. I, I, I have worked really hard to try to trim the fat, and and yeah. I'll tell you that one thing we're not mentioning here is there is a functional benefit to having zero fat in your transmissions. Yes. And so this is a thing. Maybe it's a pet peeve, uh, or sort of a foundational pet peeve. But how many times have you been listening to a vast aviation emergency situation, and somebody's in the middle of an emergency, and then the controller is trying to get other traffic vectored or other things to happen quickly. And yes, they still need to confirm that they got that instruction. But when, when anything comes up or, or they're doing what you're talking about, Ben, where like they just came on the frequency and just didn't even hear just that this is going on. Barged and in. they're on there, you know, all of a sudden, well, this is November one, two, three, four, five with you. And, uh, you know, so, Anyway, I think that there are functional times to be quick and efficient, know what needs to be said, know what doesn't need to be said. And if there are easy things to trim out of it that have no substantive or functional value, and, could, and, and the only thing that they can do is lead to misperceptions, 
then uh, then perhaps, I don't know, take them out. So with you makes me uh, a little crazy. Well, uh, Jeff in the in the chat has what I was thinking, which is it would be great if ATC responded to with you with and also with you. <laughs> yeah. So um, when I was flying into uh, Triad, I was yeah. hoping AG was going to work me in because he has said on many occasions that is probably his number one pet peeve is with you. Oh. And, and I wanted to do an exaggerated. Yeah. <laughs> I am so with you <laughs> at 4,000 feet or something like that, but yeah. it, it wasn't meant to be. Um, and RH mentions in the, in our chat, replace with you with climbing, descending level, if you struggle with adding extra words. So 42911 level, 4,000 feet. Yeah. Or climbing or descending, whatever. So uh, that's that's great feedback. Um, the I'm going to switch gears on the pet peeves. I have a few aviation friends. Some of them are enthusiasts. Some of them are pilots. When they work in aviation lingo in every sentence that they speak, <laughs> with every conversation we have at all times. And, you know, I can talk aviation to the cows come home, but when you're saying, when you're, uh, hey, do you want to get together for beer? We're cleared the land. Let's go. You know, just, <laughs> I don't, I don't know. There's, I'm like, I don't want to hang out with these people because everything is a aviation uh, catchphrase. And it just, uh, I don't know that I, I just can't, can't do it. Roger that. I was going to say, <laughs> you know, Ben, you could have just said that to me off air, but <laughs> sure. Nope. It's, uh, uh it's you mean off, off frequency, off frequency. Yes, yes. off frequency. Yeah, yeah. that's right. Patterns yeah, full dead, sorry. Meet you in fingers, we'll talk right there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> um, well, I have some other, you know, idiosyncratic things that are not um, comms related. This is a funny one. This is like a, I don't know. These are moments where I feel a little bit like Larry David, you know? Um, but it makes me crazy. It is a pet peeve of mine when people, whether pilots or passengers or whoever, when they get in the plane, they're just not gentle with any, they're just rough with everything. You know what I mean? The way that they do the door handle or the way that they slam things or the way, it just everything in this plane is 50, 60 years old and ready to disintegrate <laughs> and that door handle cost insane amount of money to get repaired because it was stripped or you know just all those yeah so when you see people that uh and, you know you try I, I try to get in front of that and when i'm briefing passengers and things you know um just to you know be be mindful take your time no rush be gentle with this don't touch that whatever but just in general there's just some people that are kind of just ham handed with everything. Just they come plunking in and they're just, I don't know. It's like, I'm, I'm afraid that something's going to get broken at any time. Uh, so anyway, that's one of my things. People not being gentle with things. My, uh, my doors, when you shut them, you, you bring the door down and then you move a handle, which moves the latch. So slamming it does no good. You're literally just bringing it against the against the closed You're position with the door. no latch. So wham, and then, you know, okay, but you still need to move that latch. Otherwise the door is still going to open that. Right. Yeah. I, I want to address uh mountain rat Matt's comment um, and a clarification on this. Mumbling on the mic is especially difficult for me as a student pilot. Mm. Yeah. I, I will say, and I don't mean this in, in any negative context, we know when somebody's a, stu a student on frequency. Yeah. And, and I believe controllers would agree, it's gonna take them, they're learning and, and they're given, I, you know, they're, they're working through it. And that doesn't seem to bother me. Um, I, I don't know. When you hear them on the right frequency, student pilot solo or something like that. Um, and, and it's not that often, but you know when somebody is, newer to talking on the radio. And so, yeah, for me, 
that doesn't bother me when they ramble on a little bit longer than they probably should, because over time they're going to learn. Question yeah. for you, Ben. Okay. What would you say if, how would you, what do you, what do you feel about your radio, your comm skills right now? Where, where do you feel like you're doing well and where do you feel like you might need some improvement or want some improvement or is there any room for improvement? There is. And, and I'm glad you asked that because I kind of, I started trying to read the room. I used to try to be chummy with everybody on the radio. And I, I'm still, you know, you do. <laughs> you do. I, I still am, you know, I'm, uh, have a good day. They're very brief, but I try to read the room as far as that's concerned. Like, it, and I don't know why, but Jacksonville approach, though, when you call in, they'll say, welcome aboard or so, you know, they'll give you something. And now I'm going to engage with them in a little playful manner. But I have gotten a lot better, especially over the last week when I'm flying in super congested airspace. It's nine one one five thousand feet. Yeah, and, and I'll you know I I think I have improved greatly on reading the room, which I didn't used to be. Mm. Um, and then I like to watch a lot of YouTube videos of corporate pilots. Uh. And. I, I, I don't know. There, there's just, there's a rhythm that they have that I really like. Um, so yeah, that's, that's kind of where I feel I'm at. What, what you flown with me, what do you think of my radio skills? Oh yeah. I think it's all the same. Yeah. I think uh, you, you are very, uh, friendly. And the thing is, is that you're such a fan of ATC, you know, and you just enjoy that whole dynamic. And so every time you fly is an opportunity to kind of stir that up a little bit and engage. And yeah, I mean, I'm not, I've never seen you, I've never seen a situation where it's like, Hey, Ben, stop. They don't want to, you know, they don't <laughs> care. Like, you read the room. But, uh, but yeah, yeah. I mean, you know, I'm saying this, yeah. like I, I, I just published a video where I have my worst radio call failure of all time. Um, but my critique of myself is that when I look back at my calls, I'm going way too fast. Yeah way too fast. And I don't realize it in the moment, but I, but I am, I'm trying to be so tight and so efficient. Nobody's having, I'm not having a problem getting understood, but still it's almost, it's just too fast. So that would be my, my own critique for, for me. I watched, um, uh, Peter, our friend of the show, Peter, uh, mentioned, uh, fly with Owen is a, is a great one for radio calls. I watched, they don't produce videos anymore, but corporate pilot life, I, I still, that crew resource management is second to none between those two guys. They flew a Gulfstream all over the place. If you want to see excellent CRM mm. teamwork, they do a really good job. And one of the things I picked up on them is I don't know how busy a controller is when I first check on. So I'll say 911 level 8,000, and then he'll come back and say, I'll tell him to 3011. And I'll give them a one, one good day at the, or, you know, thank you or something. So anyway, yeah. Um, anyway, that's again, a lot of, um, a lot of radio talk, but we've got some I, other I wanna, uh, outside of radio, right? Well, I want to pull some comments here first. Yeah. Um, Jeff said, I need to slow down my calls. I have the same problem, uh, to the point that it makes them, um, uh, reduced quality because I'm trying to speak quickly. And sometimes you can get away with it because they know what it is you're going to say. They're expecting your tail number and that you're at a given altitude. And this, that's the only way I can get away with it. And it was just terrible. Uh, Mountain Rat uh, Matt uh, was uh, uh, talking about being good at reading the room and not getting chatty and said, uh, I recently had a flight with eight planes in the pattern and an, an annoyed controller was proud of myself for quick, concise radio calls after I figured that one out. But there's seven other pilots that are barreling into the pattern and and not recognizing that. So, yeah. yeah. And I know that we're trying to move past the radio stuff, but Arrow Grizzly's comment, I read back unnecessarily and he's working on that. That is huge. That's true. And I would say that that is um, something that maybe falls into the pet peeve for me when I'm listening, you know, I... I try to trim all, I try, I've worked really hard to learn what needs to be read back and what does not. And yeah, so, and it takes time and it's, you get in habits and also it, it's better to be thorough and complete than not. Uh, but, uh, but yeah, that's, that's a tough one. One that I have that is not comms related 
And, you know, this one just, I don't know. It, it, it makes me, it, it hurts me inside. Uh, let's get real. When I see anyone wiping their windscreen in a circle. <laughs> it's not hurting my plane. Yeah. But it's, but it's hurting, hurting your my soul. soul. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it, it, was there a traumatic event with maybe the um, uh, initial um, I've had no kid, traumatic on wax I've, off? I mean, was I've there... had no traumatic events that involved wiping, Ben. Yes, I'm good. <laughs> um, I, I'm going to make sure if you do, if we do fly together up to the hundredth, that I am going to polish the plane right in front of you and just, no oh, man, yeah. bury you. Um, that that's I got to say I I did not expect that from you. I have I've discovered in the last month um, there's a a tiny scuff on my windscreen. You know you can see the the kind of white. Um, you know, from the, from the scrape, the, that white color on it, which bothers me because number one, I'm the only one that flies my plane. It sits in a hangar and I paid $10,000 for the windshield. So I know the entire life story of the windshield oh. and I don't know when I did that. So yeah. Yeah. Windshields uh, are. I would say a non communication yeah. one for me is, uh, at McCollum, we have a run up pad. And there will be, for runway 27, and there will be people that decide to just skip the run-up pad and do their run-ups at the end of the taxiway, holding short of the runway. Meanwhile, and it's usually, um, it's not usually a flight school, but there's there's some people out there that do it. Meanwhile, the rest of us are waiting to take off while you, you go through this, and there's this place for that. And it's just very inconsiderate. So that bothers me. We can rapid fire the the rest of these. Uh, we'll, we'll do a a, uh, a quick round of okay. anything we have left. But I'll just I'll go ahead and yell out the ones that I have from you know from my yelling at clouds perspective. Um, when another pilot on frequency asks for flight following and makes ATC ask them absolutely incrementally everything, <laughs> making the call ten times longer than it needs to be. So that one makes me a little nuts. Um, people standing in front of the coffee machine in the FBO, staring at their phone, not aware that you're trying to get to the coffee machine. This is, this is the things. Wow. That um, is a quality problem to have. It, yeah. It's, yeah. well, I mean, honestly, the, we, everybody's a phone zombie now. It's like, I'm yes. constantly just waiting for people to have, uh, and Ben, I'm going to do this for you. I'm waiting for people in everyday life to have situational awareness. <laughs> so, uh, good luck with that yes yeah. um here's one that's uh, when atc chides you for giving them information that you really believe will help them there's so yeah. many times where you hear other people or i might have done something where it's I, i'm you know i guess a small example we've talked about this i think before where it's like i i'm checking in now with uh say Nashville and I say, um, you know, Cherokee one, two, three, four, five, 7,500 descending, you know, or beginning my descent or I don't know, something, right. Just to give them a sense of, I'm not level, I am descending. And, uh, and how many times have you had a controller say like kind of whatever, I don't care what you're doing. Yeah. Just <laughs> shut up and don't talk to me ever unless I tell you to do something. VFR uh, altitudes. Like, right. Yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah. yeah. Thanks for playing in the little sandbox VFR right. guy. Right. Right. Yeah. And then the next time it's, you know, how dare you, you possibly exactly. change altitude. Exactly. You, I just had to reroute, you yeah. know, four jets around <laughs> you and exactly. you're like, take your pick. I, yeah. It's, it's, it's as close to a relationship, uh, as maybe marriage, right? It's like, you're damned if you do and you're damned yeah. if you don't, right? With all the best intentions. So. Yes. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, I've got a couple for you here. Okay. Um, I, I am annoyed by ancient technology. Uh, my 1953 truck had coils. It didn't have magnetos. Why are we still talking about magnetos? Um, I hate the speak and spell on ATIS. 
uh, and especially when you go to airports. And why is it that they don't program the name of the airport in? So a robot has got to say this really awkward airport name. Yeah. The speak and spell is going to live at that airport for 50 years. Yeah. Just just have somebody record the the name of, you know, McCollum Airport or whatever Warren it is. Warren County, regional, municipal, public. Exactly. General Aviation Airport. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, and uh, how to engage with A&Ps. Just everything about A&Ps is just so, so weird. And this kind of goes with the ancient, ancient technology thing. <laughs> this, is, you know. this is introverts meet A&Ps. Yes, completely. Yeah. yeah. Um, yeah. And then otherwise I had anyone entering, not using a standard pattern entry, drives me nuts. Unless there's a real reason to, I don't know, something, whatever. Um, people flying C-17 patterns in A-172. And and then for whatever reason, they come up, they, they turn a four mile final or whatever to come on their C-17 pattern. And then they are already at 300 AGL and they just scrape, they just hang it off the propeller to like 200 AGL on a three mile final. Uh, that stuff makes me crazy. So uh, anyway, just wanted to mention that, but I, that's all I've got. I, I have a, just a, a few more. Uh, you guys prepare lists. Um, I guess some of us have to work for a living and, and don't have time to actually prepare a list, but um, I, I agree with a lot of those. Um, the the one uh, the the bomber patterns really does bother me. Uh, it creates so much more um, conflict. There's so much more that can go wrong. I think when they do that, and people don't really take that into consideration. When I was a student pilot and, and a low time pilot, I didn't pay a lot of attention how tight I was, and somebody corrected me on it and said, "You know, you need to be in gliding distance if you was an engine. That's that's how you judge how far you need to be from it." Um, but the, uh, other part of it is, um, I just had it in my brain. It went away, but it's, um, uh, getting, uh, talked to by ATC when I'm on final that's happened a couple of times. And we have a local controller that says you're number one for the airfield. And then when you say, am I cleared to land? And he goes, I already cleared you when I thought you're number one in the field. And uh, I have uh, talked to the manager of that tower and said, you got to hear the words clear for landing. Yeah. So um, that's that's kind of it for me. Um, and please don't shame people for asking if they're clear. That's something that you want to make sure is correct. So that's, yeah. You'd probably rather hear it twice than zero. So don't punish people for, for asking. I, I think w when I double check, nine times out of 10, they may have a slight tinge of annoyance in their voice, but I think it's just been a long day and, and they're not annoyed with me. They're probably thankful that I'm, you know, paying attention. But, and uh, to wrap up with that, I just want to say, who cares if they're not having a good day or, you know, if they're having an attitude that day or whatever, this is rare. It's not the, the rule, but get the clearance. Do what, if, 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 if you just, you believe you heard it, but you don't, you can't, you just, I don't know. You, you want to be sure, uh, I bother people, make them upset, do whatever you need to do to get the clearance you need. Yeah. Um, so, and, and the last one was, I, I've had several times where because we're in slower airplanes, we're on frequency a lot longer than the, the fast moving jets. And I've heard multiple times where there's pilots that have clearly not planned out their flights ahead of time. And now they're putting it on ATC sh shoulders to get them out of the jam. Yeah. And uh, that that's probably, it's obvious. Um, there's a line of storms and they want to go through the Bravo to get around it. And, you know, Hartsfield's backed up and they're like, no, you can't do that. You can go around one side of it to get around this, but you can and they don't understand and they keep pushing back and it's just, it was poor planning on their part. So um, that that really, it, it comes out very clearly on frequency, so. Yeah. Well, uh, uh, Wendell Geek said, uh, what's worse, brasher or annoying a controller? Yeah. Right, right. Um, yeah. We got uh, Phoenix Cells joining us tonight. 
I think that comes from the anxiety of not switching uh, uh, frequencies uh, correctly when you're when you're talked about that. So, oh yeah, um, yeah. And Todd uh, poking a little fun at me. My pet peeve is people who say I have to work for a living. <laughs> well played, sir. Very well played. Um, not for much longer, though. Hopefully, we'll see. Yeah. Our uh, our friend planes plane. Plain Places and Adventures said, uh, last call on Unicom is an annoyance. Uh, Mr. Ballard uh, was talking about tarmac. Oh, yeah. And right. earlier when we were talking about waiting to check in, um, RH, a former controller, not a controller, uh, RH of opposing bases said, if they absolutely need to talk to you uh, and you haven't checked in yet, they'll reach out, have patience. Uh, have you had those blind calls? Have we talked about that? I've, I've had calls. I've had people. Uh, reach out. Yeah. Yeah. I, I've gone from the Delta to the Charlie departure. And before I check in, they're already asking for me, yeah. which is, it's, it's weird, but I guess it makes sense. Right. Yeah. Right. Very good. It's kind of like being called on in school when you're, we, we, oh, you remember yeah. being called on in school and you, you were surprised by it, but you actually knew the answer. I don't even want them to know my name and, and I'm in trouble. Like right. this is like double. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Right. Um, well, that's going to wrap it up for us. Um, so keep in mind, even though you may have your pet peeves, you could be somebody else's pet peeves. So yeah. And send yours in. Send yours, send yours in. in. Let us know. Let us hear from you. We can uh, keep the us. grumbling going. Yeah, absolutely. We want you to engage with us. So email us at midlifepilotpodcast at gmail.com. Go to our website at midlifepilotpodcast.com. Let us hear from you. You can leave us a, a message, a audio message, and uh, tell us what you think. Um, we've got some new stuff coming into the merch store, hopefully in the next couple of weeks. So uh, we'll keep you posted on that. What else, gentlemen? Anything else for the good of the order? We're good. Yeah. We're good. Signing off, episode 96 of the Midline Pilot Podcast. Thanks, everybody, in the chat for joining us. We'll see you next week. Take care.